let's talk about when the Hardy-Weinberg theory applies. Let's review the conditions necessary for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to take place. In other words, no evolution, large population, random mating, no genetic drift, no gene flow or migration, no natural selection, and no mutations. So that means anything that messes with any of these factors, you will get evolution. So changes in the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium means there is evolutionary change. So the factors include a small population, because if one individual were to change in a small population, that would have an effect on the frequency of the alleles in the population. Non-random mating, which means individuals may choose a mate for life, genetic drift, migration or gene flow, natural selection, and mutation. So mutations are changes in DNA. They are inheritable. They occur during meiosis, so creation of sperm or eggs. There's two types of mutations. Chromosome mutation, which is a gain or loss of a chromosome, and a point or gene mutation, a change in a gene on a chromosome, which causes sickle cell anemia and Tay-Sachs disorder. Mutations usually show up in the homozygous recessive genotype. Therefore, they remain hidden in a generation through the heterozygous genotype. Mutations can result in genotypic variations. Mutations are the original source of variation. Mutation rates through evolution were extremely slow, but resulted in a change in species to better their chances for survival. The mutations may be beneficial in one environment, but could be detrimental in another. This is survival of the fittest, so the individuals best suited to their environment will survive and pass on their genes to their offspring. Genetic drift is when a population size significantly decreases. It results from chance events like natural disaster, human interference, migration, or unsuccessful mating. We end up with changes in frequencies of alleles in a population. The founder effect is the first type of genetic drift where a few members of a population leave and find a new place to live. So they are the founders of the new population. There is a loss of genetic variation when this new population is created from a small subset of a larger population. The new population has a disproportionate frequency of alleles of the founders of that population. So here we see that the original population had way more blue than red, but because three of the individuals that left were red, the new population is going to be mostly red. So significantly different frequency of alleles than that original population. Ellis Van Creveld sy syndrome means that a person has short stature, polydactyly, and hole in the heart chamber. Just to throw back to our previous part of this unit, what type of inheritance is Ellis Van Creveld syndrome? If it's one gene that causes many traits, it's called pleiotropy. This syndrome is more frequent, frequent in Amish community because founders carried the recessive allele. They passed the alleles to their offspring and because they live in a small community, the allele is contained in the community so that there is increased frequency of the syndrome amongst the Amish people. Genetic drift and the bottleneck effect. So the second type of genetic drift is the bottleneck effect. It occurs when a few members survive a widespread elimination of the species. So in this one, you are looking for death. If most of the individuals have died, then it's the bottleneck effect. One example is cheetahs in Africa. Farmers kill cheetahs because they perceive the cheetah to be the top threat to their livestock. Some game hunters shoot them for sport. Cheetahs also do not produce many young because they are shy and they may not mate. Second example of genetic drift and the bottleneck effect is the elephant population in Africa. It's been drastically reduced and now there's decreased genetic variation. As we know, they are hunted 
for their tusks. So why is it called the bottleneck effect? Imagine that the entire population is within a bottle. Here's the parent population. A natural disaster or hunters came along and killed almost all of them in the bottle. The only ones that survived are the ones that made it out through the bottleneck. And so we see in this example, the surviving individuals, there's a lot more blue than yellow. And so in the new generation, fewer yellow alleles means lower genetic diversity. So let's try a few questions. Which form of genetic drift is it? Lions were decimated. That means they were killed. So remember, if you're looking at animals being killed or there's death, then it is bottleneck effect. In Quebec, the distribution of Mendelian diseases can be traced back to immigrants, immigrants or founders. So that's the founders effect. Mutineers from the ship, the Bounty, sailed to an island with a few Polynesian women several hundred years ago. Biologists examined the genomes of the people still living on Norfolk Island and found that one third of their genome can be traced back to the 17 individuals that started the population, founders. So founders effect. A supervolcanic eruption that occurred about 75,000 years ago at the site of present day Lake Toba in Sumatra, Indonesia, caused human populations to sharply decrease to about 6,000 individuals. So once again, you see death, which means it is the bottleneck effect. Last one, hundreds of thousands of northern elephant seals once inhabited the Pacific Ocean. They were slaughtered. So we're talking death again. So it is the bottleneck effect. Take a look at the Neba sisters genetic drift video. It's a good one. Okay, let's talk about migration. Migration can also be called gene flow because when individuals move, their genes go with them. Immigration is movement of members of a species into a population. So in, m almost the same. Genes are added, therefore the gene pool expands or increases in diversity. M aggression is movement of members of a species out of a population. So genes are removed from the gene pool. The gene pool contracts or decreases in diversity. In both cases, gene frequencies change. And diversity decreases as a result of that gene pool contracting. Okay, natural selection is the primary mechanism of evolution. It's also called survival of the fittest. Organisms best suited for a given environment will survive and pass on their genes to the next generation. Non-random mating is a type of selective breeding where individuals seek mates within a small population. This means particular genes are selected for during non-random mating. Peahens, which are female peacocks, choose peacocks based on the number of eye spots on their tails. The more eye spots, the better. This also corresponds to the health of the peacock, which means the peahens are choosing the healthiest peacocks with which to mate. Non-random mating is a form of natural selection, so it contributes to evolution. Take a look at this Bozeman video on the summary of factors that cause evolution. The peppered moth is an example of evolution that happened in a short period of time. Pre-industrial revolution in England, birds ate the dark moths because they stood out on the white bark. Light colored moths were selected for because they're camouflaged, which means the environment selected for them to survive. Post-industrial revolution, birds ate the white moths because they stood out on the dark bark. And now the dark colored moths were selected for because they're camouflaged on the dark polluted bark. So to summarize, organisms that are selected for have a greater chance of survival. Organisms that are selected against have a lower chance of survival.